Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today is a super exciting day because we finally get to take a look at a gaming handheld powered by the Ryzen 7 6800U. So yeah, we're finally getting some really powerful handhelds with those Ryzen 6000 series APUs. And the unit we're going to be taking a look at in this video today is from AOK Zoe, known as the 6800U. These are expected to be shipping in September, and if you're not familiar with AOK Zoe, that's totally fine because it's kind of a newer branch of 1X player. They're going to be their own company, but they definitely have a lot of help from 1X and 1Netbook, as you can see in the design here, and that's really awesome because they've already got kind of the manufacturing process down and all the connections to get these out the door. And I'm super excited to see more competition hit the market. That way, everybody can be really competitive with their prices and performance. But real quick, before we get into it, let's go ahead and take a look at the unit. Round back here, we will get a kickstand. It also utilizes analog triggers, so it definitely has that going for it. Moving around to the bottom, we do get micro SD card support with this unit, and we've got a single USB Type-C port down here. And up top, they've included a full-size USB port, something I love to see on these handhelds, another USB Type-C port. We've also got a 3.5mm audio jack, our power button, and volume rocker. So when it comes to the specs, obviously we've got that Ryzen 7 6800U. This is something we've been wanting for a long time in a handheld, and a lot of them will be releasing by the end of the year. But this is the first one that I've been able to get my hands on, and I'm super excited to test it out. So with this, we've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 2.7 GHz with a boost up to 4.7. And the most exciting thing about the 6800U are the built-in graphics. We've got the new AMD Radeon 680M. It's based on RDNA 2, 12 CUs, and a clock up to 2200 MHz. This is more powerful than the Steam Deck's GPU, and the CPU obviously is going to beat that out also, as long as we can send enough power to this unit. This does utilize LPDDR5X at 6400 MHz. We've got a 1TB M.2 SSD, an 8-inch 1920x1200 IPS display, and a 48-watt-hour battery with 100-watt quick charging. Before we dive deeper into the performance of this device, I wanted to show off some gameplay. Here we have Forza Horizon 5, and we're at 15 watts. This is the stock TDP, but this has a button on it. All we need to do is press it once, it'll take it up to 28 watts. We're at 1920 by 1200, no resolution scale, and we get an average of around 61 FPS. So what I'm going to do now is just turn resolution scale to quality. And now through this, I mean, it's definitely playable at 15 watts. And now we're getting an average of 71 FPS. 1920 by 1200, resolution scale set to quality, low setting. I don't mind playing it like this. I still think it looks really good on this display. But this little APU does have a lot more to offer. At 15 watts, it just can't send enough power to keep those maximum clocks on the GPU and the CPU. But that can be fixed by taking that TDP up to 28 watts. And now we're at 1080p medium settings with no resolution scale, and we're getting an average of around 69 to 70 FPS. Again, very playable. I would just lock VSync on and play it at 60 all day but medium 1080p on a handheld with this game is really, really impressive. Then you gotta factor in battery life at 28 watts versus 15. Luckily, this does support 100 watt quick charging, so you can get that battery up really quickly. So when it comes to the overall design, I've always been a big fan of these larger handhelds. This has that 8 inch IPS display, and it really feels like a 1X device. We've got these really nice analog triggers with a lot of throwback here. The analog sticks themselves feel great. We've got these extra function buttons up front here. We can turn the built-in controls into a mouse. So if you don't want to use the touch screen, you can always navigate the operating system really easily. But the one thing I'm not liking right off the bat is the D-pad. So it is using a conductive pad, but personally, I just don't like the way it feels, and I really don't like the way it looks. But I have to keep in mind that this is an early prototype, and hopefully this can be updated by the time it's released. We've got an extra button over on the left-hand side, which will bring us home. Any given time you press this, it'll bring you to the desktop. And we also have our turbo button, and I'll show you how that works real quick. So the stock TDP on this device is 15 watts. If you take a look here in core temp, maxes out right there at 15 watts. I'm just running a CPU stress test. If you press the button once, it'll bring it up to around 25, and again to 28. Now, in the documentation, they state that it's just 15 and 28, so I'm not sure if this is going to be a feature with like three settings, but that would actually be pretty cool to have a few more settings that we could work with here. Because when it comes to that 6800U, especially the new 680M iGPU, up in the wattage really makes a difference, especially on the GPU side of things. And I'll give you an example here. 
3D Mark Night Raid, 15 watts, total score 13,377. At 15 watts, the 680M does struggle to hit its maximum clocks, but as soon as we take it up to 28 watts, we now have a total score of 23,224. So taking it up to 28 does give us a really nice bump in GPU and CPU performance, but I'll tell you the truth, this actually has more in it. 28 watts still isn't going to keep those clocks on the CPU and the GPU at max. Here's a couple more. 15 watts with Fire Strike, 3,078. And at 28 watts, 6,299. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy. And at 15 watts, we got a total score of 1,118. And at 28 watts, 2,731. So yeah, it does make a huge difference up in that TDP on the 6800U. But now it's time to test out some more games because this is what these handhelds are all about. Here's Injustice 2, 1280 by 800, medium settings, 15 watts. And at 1920 by 1200 at 15 watts with these same settings, it does struggle a bit, that's why I took it down. But it still looks great here at 800p, and this game runs really, really well. I'd say an all-around little sweet spot for this APU and this handheld is 20 watts, but we're going to stick with the 15 to 28 just from the turbo settings here. I was pretty sure that GTA 5 was going to work well on this device at 15 watts, and here it is at 1920 by 1200 with a high normal mix. We can get an average of 70 FPS. Really great performance, but again, we still got a little more that we can push out of this, so I figured I'd just go ahead and test this one at 28 watts. Keep in mind, turning V-Sync on at 15, you're going to be good to go, but I still wanted to see what we could do here. Make sure we go up to 28. And with the graphics set up the same way at 28 watts, we average 84 FPS. So going into Halo Infinite, I was almost positive that I'd have to take this up to 28 watts to get a decent frame rate out of it. But we're at 15 watts, 1280 by 800, low settings, and we average 66 FPS. I was blown away seeing that we got this kind of performance at 15 watts. This was one of the more impressive titles that I tested. This is just a harder one to run, especially on mobile APUs. Checking out God of War, 1280 by 800 original settings, FSR set to performance. We get an average of around 35 FPS. Not too bad. Um, I mean, I could definitely play it like this. But we're only at 15 watts, and as we know, this 6800U does liven up when we up that wattage. So we're going to go ahead and try it, just like this with the same settings. And even at 28 watts, I don't think we'll be able to run this at a constant 60, at least with the settings we have right now. Original settings, 1280 by 800 FSR still at performance. So let's go into the settings and take everything down. So what we're going to do here is go to low settings. I want to see if we can run this at 60. I know it's a harder one to run on these APUs. And even at low, with what we have here, it's just not going to run at 60, but it's so, so close. There's one last thing that we can try from the settings. And basically, we're going to go as low as we can here by taking FSR to Ultra Performance. And it's right on the edge. I mean, as you can see... Not bad at all. I mean, 28 watts on this APU definitely works great. But remember, at 15, you can run this at 30. You can go ahead and lock it at 30 and have a really good time with it. Moving over to Cyberpunk 2077. And with these APUs, you're going to need as much as you can get out of this thing. So I went to 28 watts. Now with the Steam Deck preset at 15 watts, you can run this at 30. But I wanted to see if we could hit 60. And at 28 watts... Just like God of War, we are right there on the edge. I mean, this is so close, and most of the time we are stuck at 60, but we'll have those dips. I did take the population density down to low, and that's basically the only other thing I changed from the Steam Deck preset. Next up, we've got Control, and I'm just going to keep it at 15 watts. So we're at low settings, 1280 by 800, and yeah, very playable. Obviously, throwing some more wattage at that APU will definitely help out, but I really wanted to see if we could hang with the Steam Deck at 15 watts, 
and it's looking like if we turn V-Sync on here, we could have a really smooth 60 FPS experience. Of course, you will get a couple dips here and there, but overall this does work really well at 15 watts. First impressions, even at 15 watts, this is a great performer. I personally love the design. I'm a huge fan of these larger screen handhelds, but there is one thing I need to see change before this thing's released, and that's the D-pad. Just put a regular D-pad in here, or maybe even a swappable D-pad like we see in the Xbox Elite controllers. I think that would be pretty cool. That way you could choose what you want to use with this unit. But so far, the AOK -OK Zoe 6800U is turning out to be an absolute powerhouse. Keep an eye on the channel because I will have a full emulation video coming up. I want to test out some more PC games, and I'm definitely going to be installing SteamOS on this to see how it performs on a 6800U handheld. So if there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on because we've got a lot more coming with this. I've been really excited to get my hands on one of these, and there's just so much that I need to test on it. Let me know what you think about the performance so far in the comments below, and like always, thanks for watching.